I'm just so passionate about teaching children who struggle to speak. And, um, and usually I focus upon how to get children to combine consonants and vowels to form words. But today I'm going to focus on how to get children to combine words. So it's the Kafka Speech to Language Protocol, but it's the L part of the program, the language part that we're going to talk about today. Because I know that you're all probably seeing or have a child who's speaking in some single words and they're just not moving ahead. And that's, those are the skills that I really love to teach. And I'm going to show you a lot of video today, and especially of coaching parents, because you really are with the children in the natural environment for more time, and that's where they're really going to uh, use and practice their skills. So I'm really hoping to make this a very functional hour and a half. We're talking about children who struggle to speak. And they can often con you know, convey a great deal of meaning through single words. But they're often capable, very capable, of combining words. And you'd be surprised at just little cues and scripts that you have, if you can become an orchestrator and you can give them the, the, the oral postures and the gestures and the cues and the scripts that they need and then start fading those cues away, that they will start to combine words. One of the biggest things is expectation, is that once we do teach the children how to combine words, we, we expect that it's going to be more efficient for them to combine words than to revert back to their single word approximations that you are very well able to understand. And many of these children are, are young. And so you can, you can understand everything they say even when they make gestures. True? But we're going to get them capable of combining two and three word combinations and not to worry about grammar. We're not really worried about them using is, are, was, were, have, has, had, and all those linking words. We really are interested in telegraphic language. And if you think of a telegram, where you don't want to pay for all the extra letters and words, that's the kind of language that we're going to teach first, and then we're going to bring them to the grammar, the syntax, the morphology, the word retrieval, the combining of words from there. answer first cues. Just give the answer first before you ask a question. Open door. What did you want to do? Okay, so you just give the answer first. You don't have to elaborate like, would you like me to open the door? But you just give them the answer. Open door and then you're going to help them to produce those two words. Now the hand cues can be all sorts of different people's approaches, but my favorites are these. You're going to, these are cues that, um, that we do on our own. These are, these are going to be visual cues. Now, I know that you probably know some things about prompt therapy, which is a very physical, proprioceptive, tactile way to cue. The cues that I'm going to talk about today are visual and auditory. Um, and so we really want the children to look at our faces and know how to make those vowels, how to make those consonants. But for today's approach, because we're talking about language, we're going to use those cues so that they know how the word starts to get them into the word and then to follow through and get them into the next words as well. So here are just some examples. I'm not going to go through everything. But the vowels, if you just feel where those vowels are produced and you make an ah, <coughs> pull down, instead of pulling down, I'm going to change this picture. Instead of pulling down with your finger, pull down this way on your jaw, ah, and you can feel right there where there's a little indentation when you make that ah. Ah, all right? And then, if you want to do eh, move closer. Eh, you can feel the indentation there. If you want to do an O, oh, you got to do two movements. Start Y, O, oh, where the dimpling is, right? And then move to the O, O, oh, because that's a diphthong vowel. And that means that that vowel has two movements. And very often, children will distort that O oh, because they're not putting the O part in there. So we have to, and we want it to be smooth. We don't want to do oh, ooh. Because then the children will say oh, ooh. We want to do oh. And the same thing with a. We got to go from a, remember the a, to the e, and you can go up into the gums. E, a. So we're going to go through some of these, but really very briefly. There's ooh, there's if, if can be up here, if. And I know it's hard to see me anyway, but I hope that this is working out. And then ah, 
feel just where there's the dimpling. Uh, hold down just a little bit. Uh, and then for some of the simple consonants, here's mmm. But you can do it mmm. You can do it mmm. As long as a child realizes that when you make that movement, that they're, that they're supposed to say mmm, right? And you want them each to be different. So there's bilabials where your lips are together, mmm, and ba. But you want each of those cues to be different from each other. So mmm, but maybe can either be this, or you can put a finger underneath the, the uh, lower lip and pout it out, right? And then buh, take your fingers and slide them over your lips, buh. Okay, so those are three of the bilabial sounds, but they're all a different cue, so that the children know which one you want them to do. And then here's a duh and a t, you can pull it out, and a ha, you're just blowing on your hand, Okay, so those are just some basic cues, visual, and you're also saying them. But now we've got to get to some other cues that are going to help with combining words more than just to, to produce the sounds.